Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another exciting discussion on all things well-being. This is uh, Dr. Kimberly Quinn, and I'm here to, it's my honor and privilege to, I love doing these videos, I have to say, and, you know, it's all about helping people become the boss of their brains, uh, which, you know, the sort of sub-theme is, you know, helping people to see their own value, hopefully, because thoughts come first and feelings come second and then actions or behavior third. So by learning to control our thoughts, learn, then, we then, for, then we therefore learn to have some agency over our lives to live our best life. So today we're gonna talk about, in my very fun office at Champlain, we're gonna talk about uh, not biting the hook. Don't bite the hook. It can be so easy because it's such an urge, it's such an itch, and yes, I do know I'm missing an earring. It's somewhere in the hallway. I'm quite certain I haven't been that far today. Um, so Shenpa, we're going to talk about Shenpa, which is a Tibetan word, and it, and if you have not heard of it, by the time this video is through, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I probably. It's so familiar because it's such a familiar thing to most of us, and it's Shenpa is sort of at the roots of really any aggression. And before I go one minute further, I have to give a shout out to uh, Pima Chodron, um, because this is all her stuff from Practicing Peace in Times of War. It's actually a little skinny book, and uh, she's pretty amazing. So, so Shenpa, this Tibetan word is, is at the roots of, of aggression. It's also at the roots of our, of craving, you know, to sort of scratch the itch. So, I'll give you an example. When somebody says something snarky to us, or let's say they comment on our fashion sense, or let's say you're older and comment on one of your kids' behavior, that's enough to really get some shen pa going. Or your partner, or your partner says something to you, and like, well, I didn't like how you did that, and I didn't like how you said this, and never, rah, rah, rah. and I was offended when, or somebody says something critical of, of something you did at school or work, and all of a sudden it's that urge, almost like a little mini volcano. Like ready, that is Shenpa, that feeling of that rrrr. And I don't know that there is a direct, direct translation. I'm gonna to get to part of the translation in a second, but there's an exact translation for that rrrr. Um, and we just, we, we, if we get wrapped up in it, we, and we actually bite the hook, it doesn't usually go anywhere good. So we're gonna talk about that. So the actual translation is attachment. Though it's, it's more than that, but obviously, you know, we've talked about in other videos, um, attachment is about the ego. We can be attached to lots of things. We can be attached to what we have. We are not what we have. We are not what we do. We are not our titles. Um, we are not our thoughts, actually, either. And when we get attached to people and titles and business cards and cars and houses and um, status and you know, I am what I do, and all that stuff, I am what I have, and all that stuff. We can also be attached to fear, we can be attached to security, we can be attached to all kinds of things. And uh, so Shenpa is technically kind of goes along with the Buddhist thing of attachment. And we know that according to the Buddhist, though I, not, though I do not identify as a Buddhist, I certainly go with inspiration, with me in spirit, right, wherever I can grab it. So. What we really want to do is be Shenpa aware. So Shenpa is this feeling of getting hooked. And typically when the snarkies, you know, the snarkies usually come out of the cracks. Like we're off, we are most often, I think, caught off guard, right? Because if we had, you know, if we could plan for Shenpa, we probably wouldn't feel it because our rational brain would set in and talk us through probably, but we're usually caught off guard. And then it's like, Oh, I would have said this, I could have said that, and they just came around the corner, blah, blah, blah. and we feel this this like surge of wanting to, and they judged us or whatever, and it just doesn't really go anywhere good. It, it's kind of like an electrical charge that, I don't know, just resides, for me it's like here-ish, so well, it's here too, obviously, because it's in the brain, but it feels like it's this tightness thing. So we said somebody can criticize us, or you know, belittle us, or somebody we're really close to, and then Oh, and, and, or also maybe call us out and call us wrong because, again, the ego loves to be right. The ego likes to judge. The ego is like, likes to be right. The ego likes to be appreciated. The ego likes admiration, all of this stuff. So if, let's say we're in a, a faculty meeting, staff meeting, business meeting, whatever meeting, or in a class or something, and somebody, like, even if it's not super rude, if it's rude, it just makes the shenpa stronger probably, but even if it's just the making us feel uh, feel insignificant, 
even on a small level, that Shenpa surge is like erupting. And again, it usually doesn't go where, anywhere good. Um, and, and typically, it's also a reaction versus a response, right? A reaction is usually knee-jerk, doesn't go anywhere good either. Reactions don't generally work out well for us. One exception being you see you know, a toddler about to walk out in front of a car and you react and grab, grab her, that's great. But other than that, typically it's better when we slow all that stuff down and respond. Usually works better for us if we can hit the pause button. And it can be so, uh, the Shenba thing, because it's about the ego, can be so seductive. You know, we want to feel right in this moment. And the thing is, we're not saying you're not right. Right? And we're not saying you could be you could be a hundred percent right about something, but the fact that th is that if you have to cave into being right in front of that person and maybe other people, that's the ego seducing you to biting the hook. That's what we're talking about. And it doesn't. We, and obviously there are exceptions because things aren't you know polarized in life. But that's basically it. So super super seductive and. The idea, since we, since, well, once we get used to recognizing it, I know I've been on Shen Pa Alert ever since I learned about it, which is a while ago. Um, when we get, just like anything, when we get used to, you know, there's awareness, right? Awareness is the key. We can't do anything with that. We can't do what we don't know, right? Then once we become aware, we become responsible. Dr. Dave Landers. So once we become aware, we can recognize it and hopefully stop it. We can hit the pause button, duck into a restroom, um, duck outside, duck somewhere, and it, it, this also can be, somebody can just give us a look or a tone, any of us who have had teenagers, you know, the look or the tone, they don't even have to talk, right, they can just do the look or the tone or a combination of look and the tone, and parental shenpa is rising away, and we can actually learn to hit the pause button, and when we sort of develop this awareness and, I'm, I, and I, I was just reading this earlier, so I believe it's called Prajna. I'm going to have to go, I'm, I'm paraphrasing out of my head, so, and out of Pima Chondron's um, Practicing Peace in Times of War, but I believe it's called Prajna, when we get that sort of awareness. And really, what it comes down to is meditation, practicing mindfulness, which you know I'm a big fan, because mindfulness in general um, helps us cumulatively, just like, kind of like I run, so kind of like, when we run, even if we miss a day of running, it's so cumulatively helping us sleep. It's cumulatively good for the heart, cumulatively kind of thing. So meditation in general, cumulatively, and just being present in the moment, it doesn't mean you have to sit, you know, crisscross applesauce, as my kids would say, you know, like a monk, and no offense to monks. I mean, they're wonderfully zen out, and that's great. We don't have to do that. It's being in the moment. And the more we practice that, whatever we practice, we inevitably get good at, right? So if we even do, you know, three to five minutes a day of practicing mindfulness, we can become much less apt to react um, because we have this awareness, we have this awareness of the Shen Pa. It's almost like a sticky feeling, like maple syrup, only with not so sweet, you know? It's, it just really pulls us right in, almost like trying to hold in a sneeze. So it takes, it takes practice to really get good at it. But the, obviously the first idea is just, or the first step is just to know that it's there. And then the key is when we acknowledge the Shen Pa, just like we have talked about with other mindfulness episodes, is to acknowledge it without judgment. It doesn't help to experience the Shen Pa surge, like a little mini volcano, and then judge ourselves like, oh no, there I go again. Shen Pa is taking me down. That doesn't help us at all. We just acknowledge it and say, okay, here comes a Shen Pa surge. Somebody did, just said something salty to me and I don't like them anyway. Um, but then we can not judge it, be like, okay, maybe I'm feeling reactive because, and then this is where it gets good because there's introspection involved. You may not be doing it in that exact moment. Hopefully you can dip out and go outside or to a restroom or something. But you can reflect back on because it came from somewhere. If it's not that person's remark, right? It's what, it's, it's what it elicited in us. So it might, and which is the ego. So they, whatever they said that was snarky might have tapped into some sort of insecurity in us. Um, it, it might have been that they tripped a chord with feeling jealous, tripped a chord with feeling betrayed, tri tripped a chord with an abandonment issue. Who knows from the vault? But the Shen Pa thing 
wouldn't wouldn't work on us. It wouldn't work if we didn't have buttons to push. Is kind of the point. And so the Shenpa is going to be aware of it to not lash out at people. And it's also good to be aware of because it can really be a catalyst for growth. Shenpa kind of reveals, you know, our buttons, for lack of a better word. So um, the meditation, the awareness, the prajna is something we really want to be sort of leaning into. And just like anything else we've been talking about, you know, I'm not a fan of the P word, meaning perfection. You're better off dropping the F-bomb, honest to goodness. It's just not a good word. We want to have the bar up here at, or here, wherever, it's adjustable bar, at do our best. Now that we're aware of Shenpa, you're on Shenpa alert. Do our best. If you, if you have less or fewer, if you have fewer Shenpa moments today than you did yesterday, call it a successful day. Or fewer Shenpa moments in the morning than you did in the afternoon. Um, or the other way around, call it a good, a good day. We're not looking for no Shenpa. Um, I think we would all be, you know, enlightened if we had that going on, right? To strive for enlightened is good, though. So awareness is key. Uh, progress, not perfection. Be aware of your Shenpa moments so that you can respond rather than react by hitting the pause button or the prajna button. Excellent. This is a great place to end. Be aware of your Shenpa and be mindful. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont, my beautiful, very fun office.